Hi, I'm KK, and right now I am in the middle of building, so spoilers to what you're about to see. But there has been a new update that just came out, and the update has fixed the pumpkin on the porch. It finally shows up now correctly, but more importantly, over here in the item shop, you can find a scarecrow. I was hoping it'd be more than just the one item, uh, but scarecrow is all I saw. I don't know if the scarecrow has been in survival. I don't remember that being available last year, uh, but it has been in playgrounds for a minute. And it does need tin candy corn. I've got two. Okay, at least I have some. I was thinking I had none. So that way, if I don't find any, I can at least duplicate it. Thankfully, not that long ago, I did actually just harvest all the food because I was trying to get some stuff built up to make some smoothies. Hopefully, I did it at a good time for it to respawn as uh, the candy corn. Which, by the way, that is how you get the candy corn. Just anywhere that the food spawns, just harvest it and it has a chance to spawn back in as candy corn. What really sucks about this update, though, is that it says for October only. So that kind of only gives three days. Okay, this hot dog is here. Two hot dogs are here. That's not good. That probably means I need to go harvest everything again to have a chance for it to be candy corn. Oh, oh. But that's fine, because I need more of this anyway. But apparently, the Scarecrow can catch crow feathers for you. I don't know if that's also limited to October. I don't, like, I'm not going to get much use out of it. But potentially, it would be forever. Because if it could be forever, that'd be a very easy way to gather up uh, crow feathers. You just kind of have a line of them. I like that it's about to be nighttime uh, over here, because the pumpkin's right there, and it does light up. So far, it's not looking like I uh, got everything harvested late enough i think i did it and it all had a chance to respond before the update happened all right it's nighttime haha <laughs> it's lit up look at it it's so lovely i could actually get up there can't i i think i still have this bridge built all right let's see if there's anything special over here it'd be really cool if they gave you like a guaranteed candy corn spot up here next to the pumpkin you know or at least a uh, guaranteed candy corn spot somewhere in the yard no candy corn oh <gasps> No way. Did you guys see it? It was there. It was there. It's a candy corn. I didn't think about the fact that there are antlions over here. Thankfully, I'm just so good at taking them out. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, oh, whoa, what was that? He, like pushed me in the air and I couldn't hit him. Anyway. This is stupid. There it goes. Wow. I got five pieces from it. That was nice. But geez, that took like 10 hits to break it. So that tells me everything in the upper yard could possibly be a candy corn too. Because I did that after this. Ah, get away from me. Oh, you're a cookie. So I think the best way for me to get to the upper yard is to go back to base and take that zip line I have. I mean, I can take this zip line back to base. I already see something cool. Here we go. Whoa. Aha! Went ahead and dropped everything off here, but I kept one piece of candy corn with me. So if I don't find any more, um, I can go over to Burgo and duplicate them. I just realized that there was a picture of a pumpkin right there where it says almond. Ah, there it is. Okay. Is it just random? Oh, a casket with some bats and bones. What else shows up there? Almond. Ooh, there's a bat with some gravestones. Some little secret stuff they've been throwing in here. There's the only three I've seen, other than Ominent, which would make four, but... So there's only one more spot to, to check, but since I'm right here going past the tree anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate. So I have enough plus one for now, so that way I never run out. Ah, and it's a cookie. So I'm pretty sure I've checked everywhere after this. Excuse you, Ant, are you trying to get hit? So just the one. I'm glad I went ahead and duplicated what I had. We'll just place you up here for right now. And voila! And we'll see how long it takes for you to get... Ooh, that's kind of a creepy face. Anyway, we'll see how long it takes for you to grab me a feather. Hopefully that is true. And I'm not being fooled. You better bring me a feather. Anyways, back to the build. Actually, probably will put this first, so start of the build. Have a good time! And we are back in post-commentary, but before we get into talking about the build, I do want to clear a few things up about the Scarecrow. They do catch feathers. I just said catch in quotations like you could see me, but they do catch feathers, and it seems to be relative to the area that the crow actually drops feathers. So it's like it's got a proximity that it can suck them in into their little grubby hands, but they can only get one at a time. So 
I imagine if you have more than one, I haven't tested it, in one area you can actually pull in every one that drops. I don't feel like that would be an issue, but it is very handy to have those because it's a great way to harvest feathers. It makes it really easy to gather them. Especially if they fall on top of the grass, like you're in a really grassy area and you gotta like, try and hop up there and cut it down or throw your axe at it. It's just nice having this scarecrow collecting the feathers for you. So now let's talk about the build real quick. What we are working on is the blacksmith shop, or what I really wanted it to be was a place to store and display my armor and weapons and all that good stuff, but I couldn't do it without having a blacksmith. So we are looking at the mushroom floor. I have seen this pillar floor going around for a little bit, but I never really liked the way it looked because it always left gaps in between it. In playgrounds, I was able to throw the bricks in between and just kind of just have that clear, and all, clear out all the gaps but it, obviously you can't do that in survival. So what I did was I did the half walls around it, or more specifically here, I did the quarter walls. The half walls do stick up above the pillars just a little bit, and the quarter walls stick, or are just a little bit lower. So you actually get like this tiling of the mushroom brick, and it looks really nice because it leaves no gaps. This main part of the building, the large part of the building is where the armor stands and weapons will go. I do not get to those. Um, it's just, I realized it would take too much to do in this video already took a really long time to do, which by the way, it is currently a week and a half after Halloween. That is how long it took me to build everything in here. And it's mainly because of the last part of this build. Um, I do a lot of really cool and uh, I guess kind of crazy things with it. So stick around to see that because it is really cool. You may learn a few things if you don't already know. It's just really awesome. And uh, right up here, you see I kind of have this grass walkway going through it. I did have it too wide, but I didn't like the way that looked. Uh, it felt too bulky. And so I kind of slimmed it down to half size to where it's just got like a streamlined walkway that goes around both the first and second floor, which I did manage to uh, contain myself and keep it at only two floors, which is wild. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's only two floors. Really though, I didn't want it to end up being too large because then I just have like a lot of empty space and I did count everything and I think I made space for everything. Hopefully it works out well. We'll really find out when I put it in there. But if I need to, I could probably throw a four, uh, third level on here without any issues. So on to the roof. Um, I don't finish this section of the build. I don't do any interior to it. And then I kind of don't come back around to it to do details around the outside of it. I do have this little kind of like stair-stepping dormer that goes back half a step each layer. I mean, that does help with details on the outside of the building, but I do need to come back and touch it up. But on the roof here, I did this really cool thing where I didn't do the flat roofs, I did all triangle roofs, and it made this cool flower shape on the top, but inside it made this really awesome diamond pattern that you can see there. Um, so I'm going to play with that some more in future builds. It's also giving me ideas for things I can do, mix it up a little bit. But up here, this is just kind of like the ventilation area for the blacksmith shop area because there's going to be like smoke and stuff, you know, what happens. But yeah, we do some interior decoration here. Finally, I just really need to be doing more interior decoration. I really enjoy it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Throw, threw in a lot of chests in here. Uh, probably maybe overflow storage if I ever need it. Also use the chimney for this uh, for the first time, which is really awesome. Just throwing in some rugs and some pots and all that stuff to make it look pretty. All these picture frames, I do actually do the pictures in and the shelf here. You can see I throw stuff on the shelf, but that weapon mount, I forgot to put anything on it. I was gonna do a sh uh, sword and shield, which I'll still do, but you're not gonna see it yet because I just completely forgot. This is also the first time I'm using one of the Mantis lanterns. They have this really cool glow. It doesn't like necessarily light up the entire area like I want it to, so I'll probably have another light in there, but I really like the way it looks up in that ceiling area. So now we are doing a water storage facility, I guess. Completely unnecessary build. There's absolutely no reason I need this. My water tower provides more than enough water I can use. In fact, there's water constantly on the ground um, that I just drink out of. I don't even think I ever drink out of the water container because it's just water produced so fast. But I wanted to make this just for fun. I did make space for about 20 containers, but I split it up. I want to do 10 water containers on one side. Then on the other side, I want to do five juice and five soda. I do only throw two juice in here because I haven't collected any soda yet. And there's a juice box right behind the building that I can just throw a container underneath. Also, if you ever need more space with using less materials, 
just build diagonally. You just have to throw, throw one wall down first, angle your next wall, and then just build off of that. Uh, because it gives you more space inside and everything you put inside is going to take up the, main, the same amount of space as it would just in a normal build. And that's also why I ended up with this really cool roof that kind of cuts across, that looks like it cuts across diagonally, but that's actually straight. The building is diagonal. And then this little walkway, I did the little Y split there, uh, which I did using this scaffolding trick, which I don't think I've actually talked about that yet, but you can unsnap the scaffolding and you can just place it anywhere. You can turn it on any angle and then you can build off of that. And so you get these really cool shapes and stuff. And I do a lot of that for this pet sanctuary that we're getting to now, but this is the base of the zipline tower. This is that building I just built last time. And I said, I wanted to change it because I didn't like how it looked. So here I am changing it up a bit. Definitely like how it looks after this. All I did was kind of change one side and build a wall around it, change the walkway around the top. But yeah, this is gonna be the pet sanctuary and I, I do just build a wall around this, but it's going to continue to be a wall around the entire base. This was just kind of the start of it, uh, just to kind of see how I can get things going with these angles and stuff. I do the palisade doors because I wanted to have like a grand entrance into it. And on the side, you see those weed stem floors. I did those to be kind of like gutters but I didn't like the way they looked. So I eventually do come back, raise all these walls up by half and take those gutters out. And it looks much better, a little bit cleaner. Across the top of the door on each side, I did these, uh, the weed stem half walls and floors. So it would look like beams, like heavy duty wood beams going through um, each side, supporting what's above it. Um, I do wish they had them sideways instead of vertical like that so they can look more beam-like. But here I decided to do the mushroom pillars again, but instead for the ceiling. And it was being really weird. It let me place these blueprints here, but it would not let me build them. Any of those four across the back. I do hop down here, throw a floor underneath it, build the floor, lets me place the pillars, delete the floors, and all four of those pillars get deleted. And you can see, it only deleted one on each side, like that same corner on each side of those floors. So I placed them back in and I built them. Didn't have to do anything else after that. Don't know what the issue was. Don't know why I had to do that, but I got there eventually. And then this is kind of just like a big platform above the door. I just really needed to cover up these leaves. I do not like how these leaves are interfering with my build. I wish I could chop them down. So I do this for part of it, and then right on the corner I do build kind of like a spire tower thing, but it gets clunky. It's bulky, I didn't like how it was looking, so I did shorten it up some so it doesn't cover the top of the leaf all the way. A little unfortunate, but it still looks fine in my opinion. And right here on this edge, that's where that tower is going to come in. But now we're finally getting into some fun angle stuff. Oh, no we're not yet, sorry, I lied. We're just finishing up above the door with some more of the, the mushroom bricks, which by the way, I did this so it looks like the mushroom bricks come in fully wrapped around over the door. So when you're looking up, you're not seeing some random wood flooring or something like that. And then these angle walls, I took the time to build all these angled walls, these little quarter angled walls, and then I log off and I log back on and every single one of them has been turned Every single one of them. Don't know why that is happening. Thought that was a glitch that got fixed a long time ago. Don't know what reintroduced it. So back to the building. I am just trying to bulk out this one side to match the other side. Um, and it worked out pretty well. But now we're on to some fun angles. You can already see some just from the scaffolding on the floors. Right now these walls are kind of cutting at 45 degrees. But here you can see these are getting a lot tighter of angles. So I, my goal was to have the wall kind of follow the way the terrain made it seem like the wall should go. And so every direction that the wall or every spot that the wall changes direction, I built these little spires, not spires, towers. No, towers not right either. Buildings, no. I guess towers would be the best way to describe it. Uh, but this is the longest stretch of wall. It just, it's the only spot that it really made sense to have the wall that long, but there's a lot of spots in the train that just made it seem like the wall needed to change directions, which is again, where those towers go. Those towers are just slightly taller than like the walkway around the top of the wall, but that's going to change uh, for the ones that are going to be the outside of the, the base, like on the outside for the wall protecting the entire base, not just part of the pet sanctuary. I 
I forgot where I was going with that. Oh, the, yeah, they're just going to get altered a little bit. For right now, I just kind of did them a uh, simple shape just to get through it. But this is really what took me so long to get this video recorded, was I wanted to make sure I had this wall connect all the way around. Um, and then I started building on it. So that's why I had that whole straight shot of blueprints going around. And then I just kind of build up in the layers, which by the way, I did a really good job of keeping this video a little bit cleaner than the last one as far as recording it to be sped up like this up until this point. And then it just kind of got crazy, but I planned for it this time. Whereas the last time I wasn't exactly planning to have this style of video. And just to save you from having to watch a lot of the same repetitive building, I am gonna cut out some of it towards just the same thing on each side of the wall. Because it's pretty much the same thing around the whole top and stuff. But here we've got the grass floor. The main reason I did this was because I had a lot of extra grass that didn't fit in my grass plank storage building. So I just needed to use it. So I did this walkway that goes through the the walls. This isn't the top. I don't even light this path up. There are like windows you can look out of if you want to walk through it. But I do just continue it all the way around. It's just a little little fun fun way to walk through and stuff. But here's the walls just surrounding here. Uh, those windows, I do come back and take those out and do just one window instead of two, just with a half wall on each side. It did end up looking a lot better. Don't know what I was thinking, throwing in two like that. What's wrong with me? Because you can also get a really good glimpse of the angles here. It's a lot of fun building. And you can see a lot of clipping there because again, whenever you change something slightly, um, you can just build through stuff. It's really nice. And of course it wouldn't be a normal video if I didn't get distracted by something. I would have eventually built this path, but uh, I didn't need to do it in the middle of building a wall. But I kept going around in a circle around it and I was like, path would look really great here. Path would look really great here. Let's do the path. Let's do the path. And so I hopped down there and did the path finally. But this is gonna be the top of the walkway. Uh, pretty much this is the top of the wall, except for where the towers are and each spot that the walls do change direction. This is the top of the towers for now. Like I said, I will eventually come back. I'm probably gonna raise them up one more, bulk them out at the top just a little bit so they look a little more imposing. And that is only gonna be on the parts of the wall that is gonna be outside of the base. The walls that's just around the pet sanctuary, but inside of the base, I'm not gonna to touch those. Those will probably stay exactly as they are. And I've also left openings because that's where the next part of the wall is going to extend to, to surround the base. So I prepared for that, planning ahead. And then this is the tower that's on the corner of the doorway into the pet sanctuary. It's the one that I needed to build to cover up the leaf. Again, I don't get it all the way up there to cover up the leaf because it just wasn't looking right. But I do get it to a spot that I like. I just wish I could chop down the leaf. Get all them leaves out of here. Then this is the top of that where you can see the, the leaf is just poking through. And I don't mess with that anymore. I do kind of leave it as it is. I think I throw a light up there. Maybe I'll eventually throw a chair up there too. But here we are just topping off the top of these towers. I'm gonna throw some floors up there. Then we're gonna light up the place. I do hop down into the middle, throw in some columns and some of those spider uh, lamps, candles, whatever they're called, like I have around the rest of the base. Also thrown in these pet houses. Those two I just built are for the gnat and the weevil because um, I already had the other four. And then I do set this up to be uh, right here where these three are for the three ants with a roasting spit. So I can throw the aphid on it to make an aphid roast because they did change their favorite foods to aphid roast, but my ants still will not eat it. I've tried throwing it on the floor, I've tried putting it in the inventory, I've tried leaving it on the roasting spit, nothing works. It's all annoying. But we are coming up to the end of this video. Um, I am gonna do a bunch of beauty shots at the end of this as I do, so you can get a good glimpse of everything. Again, if there's anything you wanna see in more detail, let me know because I do plan on doing a base tour once I am fully done with the base. And anything you mention, I will show in more detail. Also, the first time I've used one of these lanterns, they look lovely. So if you have enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing. I am actually getting really close to partnering with YouTube, having that 1,000. Also, if you have enjoyed this video, please like it, that also helps me out. Enjoy the beauty shots. Until next time, I'll see you.